This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. An emergency can leave us paralyzed with fear, but it also can compel some people to do things we never thought possible. As Linda Major discovered on an afternoon in October of 1990 at her home in North Lake, Illinois. It was an autumn day. I was cooking dinner and Bobby was in the living room watching my son. Don't play the TV. My brother Bobby, he's two years older than myself he's mentally handicapped i had a lot of people that made fun of my brother years ago and i don't think that's right he's a real help in the house he does the cleaning he'll do the laundry he's good at fixing things and stuff like that i don't do the stuff that most people do i'm just quiet uh, just sit there watch tv Keep an eye on Robert. Sometimes Robert just wants to do things on his own. He likes to get his own way. He gets in the mischief too. I don't know, he's a good kid anyway. I heard him coughing and I just assumed it was nothing serious and I realized that he was choking. He started turning red and my mind went blank um, because of the fear. He was choking and his face was just turned blue when I got there. So I decided to go ahead, get whatever is necessary to get the penny out, rather than let him die. I know that you don't panic in an emergency. All I remember is like Bobby taking the baby from me and I was just so scared that I, my mind was just a total blank. And I just took Robert on the palm of my hand and just hit him yeah. with four back blows. If you can hit him too hard, then um, you cause spinal injury. That was always my fear too. After the penny came out, I was really surprised that he knew what to do instead of myself. Because I figure I'm his mother, I should have known that. I was happy he was there. My brother came to the rescue. <laughs> it's been three years since the incident. Bobby Madrick knew what to do that day because he had taken the CPR class. I always liked uh, helping other people. And I, I encourage everybody um, to take CPR course because it um, it'll save someone's life. I took a course in first aid since then because I felt really helpless in that situation and I never want to feel like that again. Lou Fontenot was also grateful to her son, Bobby. He was teased a lot. He was made fun of a lot. That hurt me a lot. And he'd come home. They called me stupid. They called me retarded. And I says, you're a love child. God loves you. You're the one that's all ignorant, not you. I'm very, very proud of my son, Bobby. I'm proud of my daughter. And I'm extremely proud of my grandson. And I love him very, very much. It feels good to be a hero. 
And I just um, was glad to be there when my sister um, needed help. So I tried to help my nephew as much as I can. We played trains. We played catch ball. And that, um, bowling's number one when it comes to um, recreation. I just love bowling. Bobby and me go bowling sometimes together. Bobby saved my life. I love that Bobby. I really don't want to think what could have happened if Bobby wasn't there, because it could have been tragic. Bobby will always be a hero in my book.